Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Hurricane Outlook and Discussion Time. It is Tuesday, the 25th day of May, 2021. Hope your week's going well. In the Atlantic Basin, I bring you good news to help your week continue along if it is going well. If it's not going well, sorry, not much I can do for you. But at least in the Atlantic and in the Eastern Pacific for now, things are pretty quiet. So there's some good news to start off this video with. Uh, in the Bay of Bengal, though, things are a different story. I'll show you that in just a moment with that cyclone over there. So let's start off real quick with a look at the wide shot here, satellite animation from Tropical Tidbits. Much of the Atlantic Basin free and clear of any trouble. There is a uh, tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa that is noted in the Tropical Analysis and Forecast Branch. The TAF-B from the National Hurricane Center uh, saying that there is a tropical wave down there, but it probably won't amount to much. Plenty of dry air, subsiding air, sinking air, dusty air, and air going in the wrong direction. Well, it, at least in the opposite direction of this tropical wave. Lots of wind shear. Basically, folks, it's just a negative environment for development. But such is not the case over here in the Southeast Pacific, well off the coast of Mexico and Central America, uh, this system looks like it's going to go on to develop further into a tropical storm and eventually probably a hurricane. So here's the Atlantic Basin, nothing over the next 48 hours and certainly nothing over the next five days. Nothing showing up just yet on the 48-hour outlook from the Hurricane Center. But if we look farther out in time or further out in time, don't you just hate that word? <laughs> Sometimes I do. Uh, you see two systems, two lemons out here, if you will heard people call them that before. It's kind of what they look like, two lemons. 30% uh, and 20%, this is all related to a more favorable pattern that's getting set up over here in the 200 millibar level of the atmosphere. That's up at the what we call the outflow level, but also down at the surface where you have a little bit more of a westerly wind component, component coming in at about 5,000 feet this way, where you have the trade winds going this way, and that helps to induce more vorticity, more spin in the atmosphere, kind of to get things going. And without that opposing westerly wind flow, just ever so slightly, uh, it's harder to spin up these large cyclonic gyres, if you will, that can eventually generate convective activity and go on to create a tropical cyclone. So if we look at the GFS at the 850 millibar level, that's the same level that I was just talking about there, GFS 850 millibars, why do I like this part of the atmosphere, at least on the modeling here? Well, it really helps me to identify these areas of energy down here that are stretched out now, but later on they kind of congeal, come together, focus that energy, bundle it up, and voila, down in the tropics, you get a tropical cyclone. That's how it works. So we move this out into time. There's 24 hours out from this morning, and you can just start to see the way the wind is turning around here, this is coming in from the west. These wind barbs are here from the east. So there's just ever so slight turning down here with energy or vorticity starting to shape up in that area off the coast of Mexico. It's well away from the coast, so don't worry about it too much. But then look what happens here. By 48 to 72 hours, you start to have more of that energy coming together. And by day four, there you go. You've got a couple systems starting to manifest themselves. At 120 hours, bona fide tropical cyclone. Is it going to be this one or will it be this one? And there's even a third potential feature. Um, basically, the models, the GFS here and the Euro are all in agreement. The European model that something will get going and wind up pretty quickly down there, or at least steadily, and become the season's first hurricane. We're now out at a week, which is further out in time that I would like to show uh, normally, and once you get a week out, I mean, come on. So we we'll just go back in time real quick. A couple things to note. It's interesting that the genesis does come from this little area of stretched out vorticity or energy as the Madden-Julian oscillation swings through, making upper level winds more favorable. Then everything starts to come together and congeal, and there you go. By day five, we should have at least one tropical cyclone out there. And remember that word tropical cyclone, that's this. Same thing as a depression, a storm, or a hurricane. That's just the generic term, and that's what it looks like will happen down in that region. Meanwhile, over in the Bay of Bengal, I was talking about this yesterday, we have a severe cyclonic storm 
Also the same thing as a cyclone. And the name is Yas, or Yas, however you say it. Doesn't matter how you say it, it is approaching landfall here in the next few hours in northeastern India. Winds are equivalent to about a Category 1 right now. And here's Dr. Masters. You guys remember Dr. Jeff Masters? I do. He was in the Hurricane Hunter plane, the P-3, I think it was, that almost crashed during Hurricane Hugo. If you haven't read about that account, you should. Anyhow, back to the task at hand. The Joint Typhoon Warning Center predicts that it'll be around a Cat, fall, cat 1 landfall. Could be a Cat Fall, too. Uh, cat 1 landfall in the Indian area, the Indian coast there, northeast India, around 8 Zulu time tomorrow. Maybe Cat 2, we'll see, and the surge is about 3 meters or so. Let's just round it up to 4, so about a 12-foot surge. And the timing, as Dr. Masters says, in relation to the high tide, is critical. And he's got some other information in here where this could make landfall. Um, and luckily, you know, in one regard, it's not going to come over here to Bangladesh, where there's a lot more in the way of storm surge issues to deal with. Still going to be rough enough with 12 feet. I mean, that's nothing to sneeze at, if you will, but not as severe as we have seen cyclones in the past. you got to be grateful for what you can get with some of these systems, right? They're rough, and you got to take them seriously. But luckily, this one is not too severe. And here's the tide chart that Dr. Masters was posting. Just some interesting tidbits about it. If you aren't following Dr. Masters on Twitter, well, there you go. Uh, and there it is. He was with the Hurricane Hunters from 86 through 90, and he co-founded the Weather Underground. Remember them? Yep, and it's not the, um, wasn't that a band at some point? Not what I'm talking about. It's the weather part. Anyway, SPC showing a pretty active day today, way up in the border states, close to Canada, and then another area along the dry line in Texas. I was just there. What a beautiful part of the country that is. I've never been up to Minnesota or Wisconsin in this case, where the and the UP of Michigan. I bet it's nice there too, but I'd prefer the Texas dry line. Um, tornado threat, low, thank goodness. More wind threat and hail threat, some gorilla hail in the western portions of Texas there. Two inches or greater, that can be problematic. So you guys that are living out there, paying attention to this stuff, keep on paying attention because it's still a problem. Tomorrow, uh, an enhanced risk there in... Nebraska, with the dry line extending down through Texas again, wind and hail, pretty big threats overall. It's May. It's late May. This is what you would expect. And then the big-time event looks like it's going to start to come into focus here from the nation's midsection on Thursday. And there's going to be more tornadoes, maybe some significant tornadoes. I would expect that we will see quite a lot of uh, what we call chaser convergence trying to get my picture to come back up so I can sign off. Sorry, microphone. I bet we'll see a lot of chasers out there if you use the Spotter Network uh, application or if you have that on Radar Scope, you'll see all those little red dots. There's going to be a lot of people out there Thursday, I do believe. So y'all will be careful out there and don't run into each other. I was just out there with Brent and a few weeks prior to that with our friend and supporter Matt. And even though Brent and I and Matt and all and once we were all out there together, um, at different times, of course, not a lot of chasers, but an event coming up like what we're seeing for Thursday, that could get pretty populated out there and near some big cities. So be careful. Mind your roads, mind your manners, and watch that speedometer. I sound like an old dad talking, but it's true. you got to be really careful when you're out there. You can survive the weather, and you're doing everything you can to make sure you're safe and avoid the weather problems. Then you get stuck on some road, or you happen to pass the wrong person at the wrong time and it could end up in catastrophe. So just be careful. We want to see your awesome pictures and uh, chase accounts. We don't re want to read about you in a police report. All right, all right, that is it from me for today. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. Remember, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. It's all the Hurricane Track brand, and we are crowdfunded thanks to people like you through patreon.com slash hurricane track. I am Mark Suttoth. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.